You know something? That's a lot of tower tack right there. This is Roger, creator of Dungeon Crusade, Groovus Games Unlimited, and how is everybody doing out there? It is so nice to be back with you, and oh wow, do we have a lot of stuff in store for you in this video and to talk about. Um, so, but first of all, welcome. Thank you. I hope everyone is having a great summer, enjoying any games you may be playing, staying safe, of course. Um, and we have some new subscribers to the channel. Thank you very much. It's very nice that you're here. I hope you're enjoying all this crusade chaos. It's a very exciting time. And with the news that you saw in the title, we're going to be getting to that. But, you know, I always like to say thank you. Your time is valuable. So thank you for spending it with me. And I, I hope you enjoy our videos. This one's going to be kind of like a two-part. So we're doing part one, and then we're going to go into kind of like a live live action part two i don't know we're gonna do some reveals some stuff you've never seen before i think you're gonna enjoy and we are gonna play tower attack i was having a really good time and so i hope that you will enjoy the second part of this video i hope you enjoy the whole video but um i'm glad you're here you know me i don't script anything i just talk and tell you how it is um so before we're gonna shoot over to the dungeon crusade page because Guys, I'm telling you, when we released this video, I'm sure you remember this because it was like a firestorm. Remember this thing from a few, I think it was two weeks ago, uh, the printing of Dungeon or printing of the game has completed. If Even if you look at the comments on that, it, there were such nice comments and I was, I'm just so very grateful to you guys. I was trying to get back to everyone. In all honesty, between the YouTube comments, messages, emails we got, Facebook stuff, I it, it took a week to get back to everyone because of that video. Everyone was just so excited and happy. And, you know, I always want to pay you guys respect and get back to you because, you know, I appreciate you guys. But it took a week about to get all of, back to everyone. And that delayed the next Spotlight video, which is the Avalon Adventure Board Game. A very in-depth look, and I'm excited about that. So this coming week, that is what's on the table. We're going to get that done for you. But then after after I got done on the comments, we have been working with the manufacturer and sh our shipping manager, our awesome shipping manager and our fantastic um, production managers at the manufacturer because um, with this news, um, the shipping of Dungeon Crusade is gonna happen very soon. They're moving very fast on this. So let me see if I can jet over here. I'm kind of all over the place, I know. Okay, so I put this update out a few days ago, and just with family stuff, I was trying to get in here to create this video for you. This is a there's a lot of parts to this video, I assure you. But um, and then there was even more news after I posted what we're seeing here. So um, if you look right here, preparing dungeon dungeon crusade for shipment, I had to go onto the fulfillments website. Our, our shipping manager gave me a crash course in this. And I had to, or we had to create like SKU numbers, SKUs, for the different add-ons for the additions of the game. Um, I learned how to write some Chinese, believe it or not, with the help of Google Translator. Um, but it was a really great learning experience, you know? Um, so we worked last week on all of this. Um, a bunch of other stuff, details for shipping. And it was, um, you know, our... our her name is Becky, our shipping manager from the Fulfillment Center, production manager. So all three of us were working together on this, and I'm happy to say it's done. Well, when I posted this two days ago, I had got a message the next morning 
they had already been working on getting the cartons like in over to the manufacturer to begin packing everything i think later this week if, if i have to ask them but my point is it is very close to being shipped very close so um, i wanted to get in here of course tell you guys and hang out with you and do some fun stuff but we had to take care of that besides that though you know i've had you know I have a family and i had to get um you know i said i'm working on some music i hope you like that one tune of mine i put on there it's from a little while back but i thought it was a nice intro to this um, i'm working on new music for the channel dungeon crusade and videos as you can see it has just been it's been a seriously busy okay um i had to start a new segment for the video but okay we talked about shipping i will have more news for you this coming week because as i said things are moving fast and we're going to scroll down because i want to make sure that i remember to tell you everything this here limited time to pre-order a copy of the game do you have an open order for a very limited amount of time this is running out definitely you can still pre-order a copy of dungeon crusade and any add-ons you would like um in the very near future like very near we are going to put out a one week fair warning that the pledge manager is going to be closing and i will be reminding everyone you know every few days that this is it because when this pledge manager closes that's it there's no more pre-orders going to be accepted it's just you know the way pledge manager works and um so if you would like a manual invite let me know let us know message uh, me over on the dungeon crusade page over here on the facebook page or email whatever and we'll get you set up for a manual invite now if you have an open order you know there's some people that um have open orders meaning they've never finished their address or finished paying for their order the way pledge manager works is it will be auto canceled because of course when shipping commences everything's locked in and they're they will auto cancel any open orders so if you have one please you know go ahead and take a look at it if you would like to order a copy you know me i'm not going to push anything on you but just letting you know definitely this is going to be closing then the only way to secure a copy of the game of course is after fulfillment and we'll have some additions of the games left a pretty good amount add-ons but it's going to be first come first serve and just by the way things are going especially from just from two weeks ago this game is getting more widespread and you know people are enjoying what they're seeing and they're seeing it offers something very new uh, just a new experience of course and that's what we were out to do at least i was out to do give gamers something really new to enjoy so that's what i wanted to say about pledge manager so i think that's it about that <coughs> excuse me and so let us know if you need a manual invite. Um, Origins posters. Okay, this we're going to shoot back over here. I'm looking so I don't make sure I miss anything. And that's about that. Update video. That's what I'm working on now. So let's go back over here. And do me a favor. Go back over to the, if you like, to the Dungeon Crusade Facebook page. So you can see these Origins posters. And I didn't know what to call them, but I, I wanted to share this with people. Um, so for the past few weeks... Um, you can see these posters here, and it has the origins where the monster comes from, um, the warfare values, or the warfare types that they're proficient in. So we have a fallen king there, level 3 champion monster, death knight, level 4 champion monster, um, Banevik. And Banevik, you know, all guardians can level up from 1 to level 4. Um, and then there's the keeper of the faith level two champion monster so i get i kind of just discuss i give you a hint about their special abilities to let your mind wander but i think people really enjoyed this series and we're going to be putting more of them out i i like sharing all that with you guys so when you get a chance go ahead and check that out then finally before we get to part two because i think you're really going to enjoy part two of this video where we're going to play um tower attack and i got the idea because um, our production manager, it was like last week sometime, she sent me this massive stack of tower attack games. Look at that. 
that's a lot of tower attack right there as I said at the start of the video so I thought it would be good and um, I just I love hanging out with you guys and playing Dungeon Crusade and chatting about it so I got the idea of let's play tower attack together and the video you're gonna see there were some people sleeping in the back of the house or I would have been much more animated but um, I think you'll really enjoy that plus we're gonna look at some other stuff some reveals um, which some reveals some stuff I think you'll really enjoy and I think that's about it okay guys I enjoy part two and um, I'm gonna be working on the Avalon adventure board game and I will be talking to you very soon part two will be coming at you right now have a great day guys hey guys welcome back to part two of this video and um, again I'm, I'm very glad that you're here I love hanging out with you guys and sharing all the stuff about Dungeon Crusade of course we're all excited for it it is finally gonna be shipping out um, but you know in the title of this video of course we had this you know updated um, shipping announcement and let's play tower attack which we're gonna do we have Halloween there the heroes are in the village for celebration day don't worry, all you new Crusaders, we're going to get you up to speed quickly on what this is. She's about to go into the House of Chance. So, but I want to share some other stuff with you. Um, you know, I, I think you enjoy these videos, and I love chatting with you guys. So, I want to show you some stuff maybe that will surprise you. Um, I'd like to reveal a monster you've never seen before. And I'm going to show you there's a ton of monsters in this game. That's in the creation of it. I love, you know, of course, there's our huge land of Avalon. Uh, you know, I love these games, so I wanted to populate it with as many monsters as possible. So there is a, a, a just a plethora of monsters. So I'd like to reveal one um, for you tonight. Over here, I'm gonna share um, an encounter with you to show you that all encounters are not bad. That's, that's a misconception. Um, there's, there's very good ones in the encounter decks. So I'd like to share that with you. And something right now that I'd like to kind of hip you to that I think you'd really enjoy. I know I'm enjoying it. Kind of along the lines of Dungeon Crusade. And it's something that way back in the day um, really inspired me in the creation of Dungeon Crusade and many others. And that would be, this just came out, I think it came out like eight months ago on PS4, Switch, and Xbox One. Guys, these games are so awesome. Um, we have Planescape Torment, um, Icewind Dale. That was a huge influence um, in creating Dungeon Crusade. I love Icewind Dale. But the biggest one, Baldur's Gate, um, Enhanced Edition, and that's Enhanced too. Um, all of these are all the Enhanced Editions, and Baldur's Gate too. And with this, you get the expansion packs for both of them. You get the Black Pits 1, Black Pits 2. Um, but this game in particular... I just, I love Baldur's Gate, and I'm having such an awesome time when I get time to enjoy this. Usually I play this a little bit when I wake up and before I go to bed, and usually I fall asleep with the controller in my hand. But this game is just, I think, one of the best RPGs ever. And of course, this was made by BioWare. Um, and the port they did for the systems, at least on PlayStation 4, it is so perfect. But I have to tell you that um, Zachary was watching me play this a few weeks ago in the morning and I was getting him up to speed on Baldur's Gate and he was watching me do quests and the battles and he honestly said I see how you were influenced by this game you know he could see little snippets here and there that you know that kind of carried into Dungeon Crusade and what I mean is kind of like you know in Baldur's Gate and actually Icewind Dale um, you control six heroes well in Dungeon Crusade you control six heroes the official way but remember, you can play with three, four, five heroes. Or if you have the expansion pack, you can play with eight, 10, or 12 heroes for Mega Dungeon Crusade. And of course, they have their fetch hound, Albus. And I forgot to get his hero card out. But there's Albus right there. But honestly, he said that, and I thought that was really something that he could see that, you know, from me playing it. So my, my point is, while you're waiting for Dungeon Crusade, I would take a look at this. You know, even Icewind Dale, but mostly... Baldur's Gate, this one. It's kind of hard to find, um, but it's really, it's really worth it. And lastly, before we stop talking about this, it's like the controller 
with it. They did such an excellent job controlling this game with the controller. It's, it's like natural now when I play it. So, um, yes, it's retro. It's awesome. Graphics have been updated a little bit. I think you'd really enjoy this. So let me know if you pick it up and what you think of it. Okay, so there's that. Moving on. Okay, this is kind of out of the Crusader closet, and I thought you guys would like to see this briefly. Um, and it kind of, it, it made me think of this when we're gonna be playing Tower Attack. I tried to use the Dungeon Crusade, Dungeon Crusade dice box, and yeah, well, you're gonna be seeing that. But I, I got something smaller, and it's something that um, I made years ago, years ago. So let's start with this first of all. This is what we're gonna be using for um, Tower Attack. And actually, I used this thing in a, a playthrough I did for years ago for Descent. I think I used this one. But, um, so we're going to be using this dice tray um, for playing Tower Attack. But I thought you would like to see this. And you know, a lot of us guys will make these dice trays. And I went to, um, and this is just an idea for you. I was at a garage sale, and I found, this was a mirror. And so I, I think they wanted a quarter for it. So I, you know, I brought it home, took the mirror out of it and um, just painted it black. And I thought it made a really good dice tray and it works really nice. So, but why I brought this up is, I thought I would show you the original Dungeon Crusade dice tray. And I made this thing, you, now it's all beat up. She's got beauty marks on her. But this right here was the very first um, one that I made for the game that was on Kickstarter and everything. It's got some wear marks. And so please forgive this. It's not perfected, but it really means a lot to me. And I thought you would like to kind of see kind of where it all started with the dice box for, di for Dungeon Crusade. And user, I have a video on there. You can make your own. What this is is basically this is a shadow box picture frame. And you can find these at garage sales or, you know, discounted really cheap. You take out the um, the glass, make like a nice bottom to it, maybe have some thin plywood, put some felt in it, and I have the stickers or decals that I could um, put a link to, and then you can just make your own. So it's kind of a piece of history, if you will, and I thought you would like to see this one. It's old, it's kind of beat up, it's not perfected, but I love it. And then lastly, I made another one. This one is more, a little more perfected, a little more cleaner, had a nicer bottom put on it. And then I think I was using this like after that original one, but I thought you'd like to see it. And then of course, my good friend, Paolo. Hello, Paolo, if you're watching this, he really helped out and he um, made these really nice dice trays. Unfortunately, he's not making these anymore, but I have a new design for this that uses current artwork and later down the road, when we get all this wrapped up, I want to share that with you. But Paolo, thank you. And he just did an awesome job on this. And he helped out with making some of these. So I thought you'd enjoy seeing the, like the origins of the Dungeon Crusade dice tray. Okay, next up, how about we reveal a monster I don't think you've seen before. Um, you know, just real quick, there's, of course, minions. Levels one to three, champion monsters. One level to f one to four, guardians. Levels one through four, and this one in particular, I figured you know we're this close to the game. I'd like to share some of this with you. So this is a level four um, champion monster, and remember that champion monsters there is normal versions and there's elites. Elites have special abilities. Our normal ones here just have the origin stories I wrote for them. So here we have, it comes into focus, an ogre chieftain. Let's try that trick. There we go. Check, check that guy out. Incredible. Um, we can see he is versed in physical warfare, ranged warfare, and chaos warfare. And those warfare values, that's pretty high. He can do some serious damage. Remember, this is just um, normal difficulty. There's expert and heroic. So he gets even tougher. Um, so I'm gonna read you his origin stories here. I thought you'd like to hear this, and I'm gonna show you his um, elite version. But we can, as I'm reading here, origins from the runes of Hextor. So let's take a look here. 
at our map of Avalon and ruins of Hextor is right here, all the way in the, what is that, northwest. And there's ruins of Hextor right there. South of that is Salemport, the uh, village of Salemport and Tower of Kings. And another little hint, because we are this close. Notice here's the Sea of Anguish. So when I designed this whole land, and this was um, painted by Damien Mimology, I gave him my prototype land of Avalon, and he just did an amazing job. But um, during the Avalon Adventure board game, you know this pirate ship here? Don't be surprised when your heroes are kind of in this region here if you meet a certain evil faction that might deal with that ship. That's all I'll say. And excuse the glare, I put one of the, the grid lighting things out, so hopefully it's not too bright, but I don't want it to be too dark. So, there we go, the Runes of Hextor, Ogre Chieftain. Ogre Chieftains are a highly volatile and unpredictable type of monster. They're very adept at hurling axes with great force and have precise accuracy. The diet of these ogres mostly consists of animals and humans. They're not too nice. And kind of like a little Easter egg, um, I did all the, um, Sean Ellis did, or no, who did this? Cameron did like the outline or the, like the, the frame of the card. I worked with him on what I needed. And then I did the graphic design, but check a look, take a look what I did with the Elite version. Something small. But notice like on the Elite version, there's like some blood dripping off where the normal version doesn't have it. So kind of like a little Easter egg, if you will. So what this is, and this, this thing is really deadly, the Elite version, it has thrown axe and before combat. And basically what happens is before combat, your heroes have to test their agility. And this, agil this one, this one is 16. And as, as the Ogre Chieftain goes up from you know, normal expert to heroic, that value is going to get higher too, you know? These monsters get tougher, they get stronger, they can do more damage, etc. So what happens is that your heroes have to test agility to dodge out of the way of this thrown axe from this um, Ogre Chieftain. And if they don't dodge out of the way, well, you have to, on this one, you have to roll a d6, and that's the damage taken. But it also gets worse because you have to test your, if you're hit, if your hero's hit by this, by the thrown axe, you have to test your physical resistance. And if you fail that, you know, there's afflictions in the game. I created afflictions. At if the first, if you, if you don't have already a physical affliction and you're hit, hold on, get that like that, so you can, you're, you're gonna, your hero's gonna be bleeding. And real easy, lose one health at the start of every upkeep phase. And to see another thing, not e that hard to understand. It's just very, this whole game, it's huge, but very easy game mechanics. Nothing difficult to understand. It's just very girthy. So if you don't, if, so if you, so if your hero's hit by the ogre chieftain, by the thrown axe, you're going to roll a d6 for normal difficulty, damage, you're going to take whatever the result is, and you have to test your physical resistance um, to see if you're going to take this affliction. And of course, you're going to be bleeding. Now, supposedly that your hero already has a first degree, and notice there's a one there. It's good we're talking about this. You can learn about afflictions. So let's say that um, Mahaliak was fighting this, and he already had this affliction. Okay, you have to test it again. You're going to flip that over. Besides bleeding, now he has a broken bone, and you're unable to roll the red D6 on combat rolls, or rather warfare. So that's a little bit on afflictions and the new monster, well, not new monster, but new to you, I guess, Ogre Chieftain, and we'll close it out with this. How do you get rid of afflictions? I know some of you know, already know how to do this. Your hero has got to drink an elixir potion. So no matter what, if your heroes have one, two, three, even four, five afflictions, once they quaff one of these potions down, it will cure them of all afflictions. I thought to put everything on the back so you can just, you know, right away. So there you go, afflictions and ogre chieftains and elixirs. I hope you enjoyed that.
Okay, and before we get into our Let's Play Tower Attack, and we're going to chat a little bit about the Village Board, um, I'm just going to touch on real quick the Encounter Deck. And, you know, remember, if you guys have watched the Spotlight series, you'll know that there's an Encounter Phase, and it's right after Upkeep. Um, you know, there's Upkeep Phase, Encounter Phase, Guardian Phase, Hero Phase, Monster Phase, Back to Upkeep Phase, right? Counter phase, you're just simply going to draw a card. And what's nice is the encounter deck, you get 87 different unique encounters, and I loved writing encounters. Actually, I wrote over 120 of them. But, and a lot of them are going to be showing up in the huge expansion next year, and more. Loved writing this stuff. But some people thought, like, encounters are going to be bad. No, they're, they're not. There's a good mix of good and bad in here. You know, there's some little things that are good, and little things that are bad and then there's some really bad stuff and there's really good stuff it's random every game so remember unlimited replayability You're always going to be something different but what i want to share this and you've never seen this one before this environment is a cool one bounty so basically the village is paying 100 gold per min per minion slain to a maximum of 10 while this environment is in effect so what you're going to do is you're going to place this, you know, you put environments out. You know, there's um, interlude cards that are just basically nothing happens. There's events, challenges. I loved writing the challenges. You're going to love those. And then there's environments. So environments are going to change something in the game. Um, this particular one is a very good one. So you're going to want to send your heroes out to kill minions because you can get 100 gold for everyone you kill. But when another environment comes into play, you're going to cancel this one out. So you're going to, um, and it says you have to put this back in inactive encounter deck. So you can really just set this aside in the tokens. When you go to celebration day, you can cash that in and make your hero some gold. So I thought you would like to see, and there's a cool little, you know, I worked with uh, Cameron on this when I came up with all these encounters, and there was no way I was just going to do that with just text. That's, that's epically lame. I wanted to kind of have like a little visual there for you guys so you, you know you can kind of see what's going on so there you go one of 87 encounters i think you're really going to enjoy those so let us move into the village and let us play some tower attack okay everyone before we get to our playthrough of tower attack I want to set this up for you. I want to, you know, if you're new to the channel, I want to explain a few things. Um, we see that our heroes are in the village um, at various locations, and we're going to go over all that. But let me describe um, what Celebration Day is and how they got to the village, okay? Let's go up here to the dungeon UI board. You're going to notice here that there's Quest Table 1, there's Quest Table 2, and Quest Table 3. The, um, notice the little tokens there. Okay, well, I'm gonna go over this. These were flipped to the side, but we have a main quest, side quest, and kill the guardians. When you complete those three quests, you're gonna take the Elder Globe. Notice that's the Elder Globe there. It's on the red side. When all the quests are completed, you kind of close the book. Notice um, I came up with that idea of it's like an open book. You close the book and then you flip the Elder Globe from the red side to the green side. Red side signifies that there's evil in the dungeon. Green signifies that there's purity in the dungeon. And, you know, therefore the quests are complete. When that happens, the heroes are teleported to the village for celebration day. And this is when they can, you know, buy new gear, receive a blessing, visit the temple. Um, oops, got to put that back. Um, go over here to the bazaar, pick up some different potions, torches. Go over to the academy to get new abilities. We can see Zeke here is going to probably pick up Arcane Barrier. Sleep at the tavern to regain your essence. So there's a lot of different things you can do in the village. Um, real quickly, how do you obtain victory in Dungeon Crusade? I know you longtime crusaders already know this. When all the quest tables have the quest cleared, finished, and all the Elder Globes are green, you've beaten the scenario. And remember, it's unlimited replayability, guys. You'll never see the same game twice, and there's multiple difficulties and ways to modify the game, okay? So with that, 
um, we're going to say that for this game in particular, um, the heroes have completed the main quest, side quest, kill the guardians. Elder Globe is flipped to the green. Therefore, they're in the village here. And like I said, they're at different locations doing um, different things. And also, when it's celebration day, it's kind of like the game's on pause. You know, there's no time um, that you have to worry about. You can spend your time here, level up, um, and then do all these different activities. So let's take a look in the blacksmith shop. Um, the blacksmith also gets new stock in on celebration day. And in case you don't know, there is, that is the loot deck. There is 193 unique pieces of loot. So, um, for example, right now we have the steel sword in the common um, area of the blacksmith shop. We have this cat's eye ring in uncommon. Um, there, that would be good for your for your um, wizard. Um, so Zeke over here may want to pick that up. That will give him a bonus to his arcane warfare rolls, make him more proficient. Over here, um, Band of Nightfall would be good for our rogue because it's mythical. Over here, Axe of Nightmares. This is epic. Sorry, that's rare. That's epic. Axe of Nightmares. That'd be good for your barbarian because it's chaos warfare. And finally, this would be great for your cleric, um, Kingslayer. And that's a spiritual warfare. So, you know, you always see new items in the black shop or blacksmith shop. So let's talk about house of chance and I'm then we're gonna go right into tower attack what is the house of chance it is a gambling hall and I created four games for the house of chance that we will go over um, anyone can go in and no dogs are not allowed in the house of chance so Albus must stay in the village so when a hero um, goes in and there's um, a few games well actually one skull or yeah skull jack that up to three heroes can play. Um, but for tower attack, for our demo today, we are going to, you know, it's a one player game. So, and it's simply, you just declare, okay, well, you know what? You know, these guys are gonna do their business here. I'm gonna take this hero and enter into the house of chance and attempt to beat whatever game comes up. And we're gonna talk about that in the next section here about what game comes up. So. Sit tight while I load up a few things and get things set up. Okay, we are finally in the House of Chance. Can you hear the music playing in the background? Listen, I can hear it. Anyway, let's talk about the House of Chance and we're gonna go over a few things here. And a big misconception that I wanna say for the umpteenth time to, you, to everyone. Um, House of Chance is a gambling hall. And I love creating all four of these games. And all the games you're gonna see, um, of course, we're gonna play Tower Attack. Um, I worked with um, the amazing Damien Mamality. And so I would give him the prototype I came up with, and then he would just d d work his awesomeness and his talent and his art. And it's, it was an honor to work with him and everyone else. So Damien, thank you. Tower Attack looks absolutely incredible. Um, so, you know, you can win big in the House of Chance, or you could lose big. Um, now, the big misconception, I want to point this out. Notice up here, there's a number one, okay? Four House of Chance games, you're going to notice that there's going to be, on each game, one, two, three, and four, you know, all individually numbered. When, a hero go when, when you have Celebration Day, you roll the D4, Whatever that result is, that is the one House of Chance game that will show up on that celebration day. The big misconception is people thought, oh, I use all four House of Chance games. No, you, you, you don't do that. That will break the game, the balance. You do not do that. Now, if you want a house rule and do it, well, that's fine. But the official way, and this is like hardcore, you, it's, it is one game per celebration day. Roll the D4, that's, what's, that's what you use. Okay, got it? Cool. So let's move on. So um, real quickly, Tower Attack comes with all editions of Dungeon Crusade, okay? So if you have, um, uh, well, let me start with this. Master of the Realm contains all four House of Chance games. There's Tower Attack, and we're going to glance over each one quickly. I didn't get all the tokens out for this one, but here's Heroes versus Monsters. I don't want to move the camera because it took a lot to 
um, get it all set up. But that's Heroes versus Monsters. Um, heroes start at the Chapel of Light. Monsters are invading from here, and you have to defend the Chapel of Light. I do have the, there's the challenge cards for it. There's kind of the back how to set the monsters up. I'm sorry I didn't pull the tokens out. Um, and then there is one of my favorites, uh, The Adventures of Bravely the Night. And you can play all these as a standalone. If you notice, it's like, kind of like an arcade machine. I love 80s arcade machines. And you get, of course, get a figure of Bravely there. And you get his handy hero card and a retro spinner. So that's that one. And notice, like up here, there's the number here. What is that, a four? So there's that. And then finally, uh, this is the only, actually, this is the only House of Chance game that up to three heroes can play. There is Skulljack, the evil Skulljack. And uh, again, Damien Mimolody, let's look at that art. It's absolutely incredible. So, um, so you can play up to three heroes. And you may know, you get a custom deck of playing cards with Skulljack. Very nice. Poker size, I think they call those, right? So, um, there you go. Custom deck of Skulljack playing cards with that. So basically, Ma Master of the Realm, you get all the games, you get all four. Um, if you receive the Knight of the Realm, Crusader of the Realm, that's totally fine. But just know every time you go into the village, by default, you're going to be playing Tower Attack, which is fine. It's a fun, dice-pushing game. Okay. Hopefully you enjoyed learning a little bit about that. Let us learn how to play Tower Attack. And honestly, in the rule book, this is literally half of a page. Super, super easy game. Um, how do we play? Notice we have this um, skeleton army here, and they've invaded the tower. And we have our the valiant Avalon army taking the tower back. And your hero is going to enter the tower and try to take it back from the evil skeleton army. And most of you know, what's my fa favorite fantasy creature? So it go kind of goes with that. So what do we do? Let's talk about the rules. One hero can play, and your objective is to try, and I've never done this, to ascend the tower and get to level eight of the tower. And that payoff there is 2,000 gold if you can do it, okay? You're going to be using some components from Dungeon Crusade. You're going to use the orange D12, the purple D12, and the green D12. You're going to notice here, and I'll read this all to you, there's um, kind of these represent the dice there. There's purple, green, and orange, okay? Your hero, let's get Haloom here. She's going to go to level one. And notice it says bet 100, win 200. So let's place our bet here. And you can just use one of these little markers um, from your Dungeon Crusade to mark um, as she is ascending the tower if she wins. Basically, it's like this, guys. Notice here the numbers. I'll read them in case you can't make that out. There's, um, I'm just going to call it a purple four, uh, green three, orange four. You have three attempts to roll these dice, and you have to meet that, um, meet that value or exceed it, and that kind of locks that die in, that you've beaten that part of the tower. Once we play a round, you're going to get it like that. So what we need to get is a, a purple four, three green, and a four on the orange D12. We paid our 100 gold. Let's start tower attack. And it would be embarrassing to lose on the first level of the tower. But I don't think we will. Okay. Well, actually, so let's start up here with purple. That number, what was a four? Okay, well, Halum acts beat that perfectly. Okay, we have an we scored an eleven that exceeds four. Perfect. Next value is three. She just made it with a four, right? Let's put our four there. Finally, that's a purple. I'm purple. I'm sorry, orange four. She only rolled a two, and I'm glad this came up so you can see. We have three tries, right, or three rolls. We've locked those dice in. We have to re-roll this on our second attempt. So let's roll again. And no problem at all. Halloween rolls a seven. Of course, that exceeds four. So what happens is she wins the amount shown, which is 200. So I have a stack of gold over here in the House of Chance that they're stocked with. 
give her that. She has 200 gold. So you place that in her player area. Clear the dice. Now, you can decide. Do you want to leave with your winnings or do you want to keep going up? Well, let's, we're going to keep going, of course. We're going to go as far as we can. So we're going to move this up. Um, real quick, say she left. That stay, for this celebration day, that will stay locked on one. Uh, say Mahaliak wanted to enter in. If you're playing with multiple people, well, I want to go into the house of chance. This would already be unlocked for you. However, after celebration day, you're going to remove that. Okay? But as it may, we're going to keep going. I, I love this. I just love this game. It's simple, but it's just fun. And it just, you know, another like little thing to, you know, do outside of Dungeon Crusade that I just think makes it more immersive for you. Okay, let's keep going. We're going to look at the bet amount, which is 200. So let's take how long we'll pay the 200. I'm going to set it here, though. So keep it out of the way. All right, so what do we have to beat on this level? We have to beat a purple 5, a green 4, and an orange 5. So as you can imagine, as she's ascending the tower, the numbers are going to get higher and tougher to get. So let's roll for our first attempt, or Paloom's first attempt. Oh, okay, well, she scored an 11 on the purple D12 that, of course, exceeds 5. I think you guys got this already, right? It's not hard. Uh, that, is, that would be a 9. She had to exceed a 4. Perfect. But again, she's having trouble with the orange D12. Um, she had to score at least a 5. So for our second attempt, we're going to reroll. Perfect. Second attempt is 11. She has beaten that level of the tower. She wins 400 gold. So I'm going to take that out of there. So she has 400 gold. We'll put that in her player area. She's doing pretty good. And of course, we're going to keep going. I hope you're enjoying Tower Attack. So let's move this up to level three. So she's defeated the evil skeleton army in level one and two, and she's on three now. Let's see what she has to beat. Purple five, a green six, and an orange seven. Okay, so let's load up the dice. Of course, we gotta pay. And the bet is 300 now for this line. So we'll put this up here. And Let's get on with it. Ooh, the purple was, we're going to have to re-roll in purple. We needed, what, a five? Yeah, and we only got a one. So I'm going to put that back into the dice shaker. Six. Okay, I'm glad that came up. Notice that is a six, and that's what she needed. So that would lock in. So that's done. And then um, a seven, and that is a six. Okay, so for her second attempt... She's going to have to re-roll those two. Okay, let's start with the purple die. Okay, she needed a five. Perfect. We got a six. And um, she needed, what, a seven, an orange seven. And she rolled a five. Okay, so this is her third attempt. Final one. Oh, that isn't good. But I'm glad this came up. Another five. Okay, what happens? She's going to lose her bet. That goes back to the House of Chance. Put that over there. And reset the dice. Now, it's locked there on level three. Of course, I'm sure, hopefully you're enjoying this. Let's, let's try it again. Let's see if she can make it past this. So we'll bet another, whoops, we'll get 300 going here. I think to me, I think if you're playing with a few people, you know, I may I designed this to be solo, but I think either solo by yourself or with multiple people, I think that I think people are gonna have a really good time with these House of Chance games. Especially Skulljack. Um okay, let's roll. Whoops. Wow, look at this. She beat it right off. Look at this. A ten. Uh eleven on the green D twelve and a 10. Perfect. So what I'm going to do is she, what's the payout for that is um, 600, right? So what I'm going to do is just take this out here 
and put this over here and get a 500, right? No, like that. There we go. Yeah, so she has basically 600 now. Okay, so let's clear the dice and clear that out of there. And let's move up to level four of the tower. Again, I hope you're enjoying checking out some tower attack. I'm really enjoying playing this with you. So she's gonna have to bet 400 gold. So here's our 400 gold bet. And what are we looking at? Uh, she has to get a, okay, a purple six, a green eight, and an orange seven. Let's see how she does. First roll. Well, that was pretty terrible for the green D12, but for, she got a seven, exceeds six. She locked that in. Um, green, of course, she's going to have to re-roll because that is an eight, and that's a two. But she seems to be having trouble with the orange D12, but she does beat that level with an eight, and she needed a seven. So our second... Reroll. Ugh, one. So no, of course that does not exceed eight. And final roll. Six. The evil skeleton army has taken out Paloom again. I almost think this is almost like an arcade machine. You hear like you know like game over flashing. Um. Well, I'll tell you what, guys. Let's. How about one more? Okay, let's see if we can do this. That gets cleared. So I said you can win big on this, or you could, you know, lose. It's you know, it's dice pushing. So it's really pushing your luck, and when you when you you know when you've had enough. So I'm going to um, put my 500 in, and I'm gonna put that in and get 100 gold change. And let's try again. Okay, perfect. On our purple D12, we needed a 6. We got an 8. On the green D12, we needed a 10. Got that. Again, look at, at trouble with that orange D12. But it's good we got those two locked in. Let's um, move on to the second round. And that is a 6 again. What's that? Six? No, we needed a 7. Final one. 11. Look at that, beats it with her last attempt. How awesome. Okay, so let's clear the dice. And what's her um, 800 gold? So we'll keep that five there. And we're gonna add three. Okay, so we'll play one more round. How about that? Okay, so she's at, what is that, level five now. Now it's gonna get pretty tough. Basically, this one you need straight eights. Let's see. Okay, so the, for the purple, we just got an eight. Remember, all we need to do is meet or ex exceed it. We did that. Uh, the green, nope, one. And, oh, okay, so, and we got a nine. So perfect. Second attempt. I'll let, look at that. Wouldn't that be something if I beat, I went up to level eight of the tower. So she, she moves up. Luck is on my side tonight. Um, okay, so, and the, wow, a thousand gold. So, did I already take that out of there? I already took that out of there. So I'm gonna take 500, right? Took that out of there, sorry. I was having such a good time, I couldn't remember. Okay, so let's move up now to level six. Clear the dice. I hope you guys are enjoying this. I'm really enjoying, you know, relaxing a bit and hanging out with you and playing some tower attack. Okay, now it's gonna get really serious. Level six. We're gonna need a purple 10, a green nine, and an orange eight. So eight, nine, 10. Um, how much, what, so how much we gotta bet? Okay, we gotta bet 600. That's good. So 600 gold, and let's roll. Oh, <laughs> maybe her luck has run out. Um, we only got a four, of course. So just remember, um, 10, 9, 8. 
So that goes back into the dice shaker nine. We got 11. Okay, so we locked in the green D12. And then, no, a five. And of course she needed an eight. So we'll go on our second attempt. Oh my, look at that. Two 11s. If I beat this game on camera, as you see, there was no editing to this at all. And I never, ever cheat at games. Never. Look at that. She got it. The payout. 1,200 gold. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to take my 600. Hope I didn't mess that up last time. So there's my 600 back. And then what? We need 600 more. I would walk away right now. I would not. I would. Because I'm already up. 15. What do I got here? I have... 2,000 gold right now. I would not play this anymore. I would use that to buy some potions and weapons, but I want to try to beat this on camera. We're going up to level seven. If I lose, you might hear dice hitting the wall on the other side of the wall and someone yelling to be quiet, but we'll take that chance. I just love this game. Okay, that amount is 700. Let's throw that in. And we could win. If Paloom can defeat level 7, she'll get 1,400 gold. Numbers we have to beat, uh, purple 10, green 10, orange 9. I would not be doing this, though, um, if I was really playing. I would, I would stop. Okay, first roll. Wow. Look at that, a 12. Okay, so we had to look at a green 10. Holy mackerel. And nah, five. Okay, second attempt. <sighs> look at that. People are sleeping in the back of the house right now or else I'd be going crazy. We have beat, I am very lucky tonight. 1,400 gold. So um, let's take, we'll just basically take this seven, put it over here, and take another um, seven. We have 1,400 gold. And again, I swear I have never beat level eight. But you know what? We're going to try it tonight. We're going to move up to level eight, the final level. And let's, how much is this? This is 800 gold. So we're going to pay are 800, clear the dice. Now for this last level, we have to get uh, purple 10, green 11, and an orange 10. You better get ready. And look at that, there's a purple 10, um, no. We have a one that goes back into the dice cup. However, we have an orange 10. Look at that. Second attempt. We need to get basically an 11 or 12. And, oh, look at that. Final attempt. No. She does not beat that level. You know what? How much gold does she have left? We're gonna try it again, even though we lost it. We're doing, I, although it took me a few attempts. I really love this game. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna pay the 800 gold. Let's try it one more time. And yes, okay, we got our purple 10. That's what we needed. However, these two are green seven, orange four. Of course, that's not going to beat that. Second attempt. No, no. So nine and seven. Final attempt. No. Gosh, she's doing terrible now. Paloom, I think your luck ran out. Two and three. I've, well, I've already lost like, what, 1,600 gold from doing that. And guys, I think I'm going to call it 
a night there, and I still have not beat level eight. But I hope that you enjoyed this game. Um, I was very lucky tonight, but I would have stopped. Where were we at? Level six. I would not have went any further than that, but that's up to you. Are you going to push your luck and keep going and blow all your heroes gold in the house of chance? That is up to you. Okay, let me do a, a little reset of the camera and wrap everything up for you. Okay, guys, we're wrapping it up now. Um, again, I love you guys. I hope that you enjoyed this kind of extended um, hangout session with me. I really enjoyed this. You know, we saw that new monster uh, tonight, the Ogre Chieftain, learned about afflictions, um, took a look at the runes of Hextor there, saw a new encounter card, played some tower attack, which I wish I would have beat on level eight, so I had it on camera, but that was, it was just really a lot of fun. Hope you learned some stuff about the village and Celebration Day and all the other House of Chance games. I, I, I really enjoyed um, this kind of video with you guys, really did. So what's coming up is, like I said, Avalon Adventure Board Game, in-depth look at it. Um, that's why I have kind of all this set up because we're gonna be working on that video. And again, I'm sorry it's delayed, but like I said in kind of part one of this video, it has been just insane crazy on all fronts with the game and, of course, family stuff. And, you know, I tried my best to get back here and hang out with you. So, everyone, I hope you have a great start to the week. Um, of course, I'll be in here in the comments section. I'll get here as soon as I can. And any further updates I get from um, the manufacturer um, and then with our um, shipping manager, of course, you guys will be the first to know. And everyone on Kickstarter and the Dungeon Crusade Facebook page. All right, guys, please stay safe, have fun, happy gaming, and remember, do yourself a favor and find this. I think you'll really enjoy this a lot. Comes highly recommended. Okay, guys, have a great evening, great day, and I'm going to be talking to you soon. Bye-bye.